Do storks really deliver human babies? Nope, but they will drop their own from high heights on purpose. And it's not to teach them how to fly. Hello, my name is Jeff, and today I will be guiding you through a list of some of the worst mothers we could find in the animal kingdom. Now, before we get any emails about this, we are also working on a top 10 greatest mothers list, as well as a worst and greatest fathers list in the animal kingdom for the future. But for now, let's use this list to remind us that maybe we as parents aren't doing too bad a job. Now, every mom makes mistakes. But there are certain mothers that really tend to cross the line. From negligence to a real life Hansel and Gretel situation, it truly is a dog eat dog world out there. Whoa, that's scary stuff. Hey, should we be worried about the kids in the audience? No, it's all right, this is culture. In the wild, there is a reason for why animals do what they do. Because of shortening food supplies and harsh environments, as counterintuitive as it seems, in order to raise offspring appropriately, mothers may sometimes turn on their own young, or the young of others nearby. Did you see that? In the animal kingdom, it truly is survival of the fittest. Really, after this list, my mom's not looking too bad. I'm just kidding. Mom, I love you. Now let's see what dark deeds <laughs> the fittest has to do in order to ensure overall survival. Number 10. Harp seal. Ah, mother harp seals. They are dedicated to their offspring for at least the first 12 days. In fact, they do not eat at all during that period. Unfortunately, once they've run out of sustenance to feed their young, that's it for the mother-child bonding. In her mind, she becomes single and ready to mingle. Unlike many other species with such abrupt weaning periods, the harp seal pup can't go on to survive on its own yet. Instead, it is left stranded on the ice for the next month and a half, leaving it incredibly vulnerable to predators. The babies will lose half of their body weight during this lengthy fasting period. Oh, your skin is hanging off your bones. Finally, when they are about eight weeks old, they are ready to swim and are able to start hunting for their own food. With a childhood as rough as this, it's no wonder that at least 30% of all these pups die within the first year. Number 9. Cuckoos Perhaps the most famous bad mother on this list, the cuckoo tricks other birds into raising her own kids, freeing her up to enjoy life as a single bird. And these other birds left with raising her child Heart family. The cuckoo does this by laying her eggs in the nest of another bird. Unfortunately for her victims, the cuckoo chick is hardly a grateful adoptee. Instead, the chick hatches earlier and grows faster than all the other birds' real babies. The young cuckoo then forces the smaller chicks out of the nest, sending them to a better place. Oh, that sounds nice. <laughs> and no, I'm not talking about the nearest Six Flags theme park. Now, the two clueless adult birds can focus entirely on the cuckoo chick, raising it as their own. The cuckoo will continue to grow until it is old enough to leave the nest and do the same thing to another bird family in the future. Number 8. House Sparrows While most women would be furious if their husband cheated on them, few would choose to take it out on the offspring that resulted from the infidelity. But that's just what the house sparrow does. She seeks out nests of other females that mated with her partner. And let's just say gives them an expiration date to the resulting chicks. This way, her baby's daddy will spend his time fathering her own youngsters. Imagine that you found out that your mother ended the lives of your half-brother and sisters just so that your dad would be able to have more time to spend with you. Wow, uh, family drama. Number seven, pandas. I know it is hard to think of anything negative about these adorable cuddly critters that also just so happen to be the Laugh Pack mascot. But the reality is that they are pretty negligent parents. Did you hear that? See, despite the fact that pandas often have twins, they almost never care for more than one cub. 
The mom will choose the weaker of the two babies and start ignoring him or her in favor of the stronger sibling. To be fair, it's not entirely her fault. Bamboo, the chosen food of the panda, is notoriously low in nutrients. So it's near impossible for a mother to make enough milk to feed two cubs. Even so, it's a hard choice for a mother to make. At least the cubs abandoned in zoos are still cared for since zookeepers don't have to worry about limited milk production, like the cubs natural mother would have to do. Number 6. Black Bears On the opposite end of the spectrum, the black bear generally has two or three cubs at a time. Unfortunately, when she only has one cub, the mother will often abandon it, deciding that raising only one baby just isn't worth the effort. She will then decide to leave the baby alone in the woods to defend itself. And I don't think I need to tell you how well that goes for these young ones. Number 5. Black Eagles our operation is small, but there's a lot of potential for expansion. Any mother with more than one child can tell you just how irritating sibling squabbles are. But most parents know when to say enough is enough and to break the fight up. When it comes to black eagles though, mom often just watches the fight. Even when the older, stronger chick ends up ending the life of the younger sibling. There's only one spot open right now, so we're gonna have tryouts. Survival of the fittest? Yeah, you ain't kidding. Number four, White Stork. There is a reason that this bird is number four on the list. And that's due to the fact we've all been raised to see the stork as being very good with little ones. And to be fair, more often than not, a stork mother is a very good mom to most of her children, except the smallest one. In order to ensure that the strongest of her offspring survive, the mom will select the smallest and weakest hatchling and do one of three things. They will drop it from the nest, spear it, or she may even choose to swallow them whole. Again, all so that they can increase the survivability of the other hatchlings. What? You know, it's true what they say. Those who can't do well, deliver. <laughs> Number three, burying beetles. At first, it would appear that burying beetle parents are pretty good caregivers. First, they'll find a carcass, say a mouse or a bird. Then they'll work together to bury said carcass in the ground, but not before laying eggs on top of the body. Once the larvae hatch, they live inside the mouse carcass. And yeah, sure, the larvae live in this mouse carcass for a time, but hey, at least they have a roof over their heads. Oh, gross. And they get fed too. As the mom consumes the dead creature, she will regurgitate the meat to her kids. Unfortunately, there's not enough mouse meat to go around. So the ones that get mom's attention get fed first. The rest get eaten by their own mom. Number two. Skinks. What's a protective mother to do when there's too many predators around her eggs? Well, if you're a skink, you say better luck next time. And then you as the mom eat the eggs before they get a chance to hatch. Many specialists believe that the reason these lizards do this is because it's better for the parenting efforts to benefit your own species rather than your predators. But it's still a little weird to dive into cannibalism without even giving your babies a chance at life. Number one, quakas. The reason that a quaka gets the number one spot on this list isn't because it shows no love to their babies at all, but just the opposite. This mother will care for her baby and keep it very close to her by storing the young one in her pouch, which is really cute, but this is where it gets dark. When threatened or attacked by a predator, the furry marsupial mother will create a diversion by using her own child she will push it out of her pouch and leave it behind for the enemy to get. You forgot your baby. Hi. The joey serves as a yummy distraction for the predator while the mom runs to safety. Oh, I know, sounds horrible. But here's the thing, a quokka's life expectancy is about 10 years, and female quokkas can produce 17 offspring over a lifetime. 
So I guess the mother will be able to live again to breed another day? But man, that's dodgy. You forgot your baby! And you, my friend, have just been introduced to some of the roughest parenting the animal kingdom has to offer. Did you agree with our list, or do you think there was another animal that deserves the number one spot? Let us know in the comments below. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you all next time.